Hi there, Jim here. So today I am going to be showing you the unboxing of an ESR meter. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of a review on the ESR meter. And uh, we will also learn together uh, just how uh, the ESR meter works. So I bought this one uh, off of uh, a store on AliExpress. Um, there's not a huge selection of ESR meters that I was able to find, but I did see someone showing this one, so uh, I'll say that that influenced my decision. So here it is. Um, so uh, it's uh, interesting. So this is supposed to be an MESR. I'm supposed to have this one here, the 100. So let's see. And it is the 100. And uh, in addition to, okay, let's see what's in here. So we've got two uh, probes here. So these go to some alligator clips. And there's another probe here. This one has some jaws. So if you're you know, generally dealing with an SMT board, these jaws ought to make it easier to, uh, to clamp on to the thing that we're interested in. And in the package here, there's the meter. And uh, so I'll have to get some batteries for this. There's a battery compartment back here. And I did see, apparently, this input here will also take uh, a battery, or you can run your voltage in here, and that will uh, power the unit as well. Okay, so I've got that out of the box. Now. The objective, the purpose of an ESR meter, is to allow you to test capacitors while they stay in circuit. So rather than having to uh, unsolder, desolder the capacitor from the circuit board, you can test the capacitor while it's still in the uh, in the circuit. And so, given that I don't really <laughs> feel uh, like desoldering lots of capacitors just to troubleshoot. Uh, this is a handy uh, device to have. So uh, I'm going to find some batteries and we'll, uh, we'll give this a try. Now I'll have to find some circuits as well that we can uh, work on this with. All right, so step one, we need to get some batteries in here. Now I didn't think that batteries would generally be that interesting, but you learn a couple of interesting things when you do the batteries. So battery compartment, not too interesting, but the, um, the screw is a standard plastic screw. And if you can tell there, there's a uh, no metal ring there. So if you're uh, into the batteries in and out of this very frequently, you're gonna end up chewing up the plastic. So that's not something that I like to see. I prefer to see a, uh, a metal collar there and a metal screw because that's, uh, that's gonna last a lot longer than something like that. That plastic screw after th three or four 
uh, goes, that plastic screw is just going to chew away all the plastic. Uh, anyways, the other piece is that this unit takes two uh, AA batteries. I think the battery voltage used to be different in the past, or the I think it might have been a 9 volt battery in earlier models. According to the uh, the manual, this V2 model uses the uh, AA batteries, and it can also take an external um, micro USB battery. So we'll try that out as well. But initially, let's uh, let's do this. You might want to use the micro USB more often if uh, we have to deal with this kind of plastic nonsense. I really. I have to say that anything that has these plastic, you know, batteries just loses marks in my book because you have to be careful with that. Okay, so we got the battery in. Let's uh, power it up. Okay. Well, it powered up. That's a good sign. Okay, the unit's powered up. Good sign. <clears throat> so, let's, uh, first things first, we're going to zero the meter. So, to zero the meter, we put the probes together. Press the zero button. Does its thing. Comes to zero. Let's give an initial test. I've got here a, uh, oops. And slipped out. If you can make it out here, this is a 470 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. So we're just going to attach this uh, there and negative. And the ESR display is giving us about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.06, 0 0 0.07. And so if we look up on the chart here, if that's clear, okay, so 470 microfarads is down here, 16 volts is here. And we see the max reading there is uh, 0.18. So any value that's below 0.18 is a sign of a good capacitor. Okay. What we want is we want uh, we want to make sure that when we measure a capacitor, it does not exceed these uh, these numbers in this table. These are the max values that uh, that we want to see. So this one is good. Good reading. Okay, so let's let the basic test there. So now let's give it, uh, let's check what happens. Let's turn this off. Okay, thanks for using me. Okay, we're going to try this out with a, uh, an external battery supply just to see what's different there. So let's take the two batteries out of here. Okay. Like I said, I'm a little bit concerned that these batteries, this battery case is not going to last because of the screw. I've already had the screw in and out of here a couple of times for the review. It's already starting to get worn. Okay, I'm not going to tighten that. I don't want to put any more wear than I need to. So I've got a uh, <sighs> cheesy little USB. This this <laughs> this USB power bank actually has four gig of RAM. Kind of cheesy device here. Anyways, um, let's. Uh, so this guy is no battery. He's not going to turn on. Let's plug this in. All right, let's turn this on. 
Okay, so that's pretty fully charged. Now this should turn on. Look at that. So that turns on. And uh, if you can tell, there's a little des designation here in the upper corner. It says that this is being powered externally. And uh, let's just take the readings on the same capacitor that I had before. Make sure that uh, that'd be ridiculous for anything not to work. Okay, so 0 0.08, still a good reading. It's a little different than what I had before, probably because I need to zero these again. Oh no, it's still zeroed. So that's interesting. Oh, this time. 0 0.07 and I've committed the cardinal sin even though I have put it in big letters here right on the front I have to keep remembering that I need to discharge these capacitors before I test them except I've just been using this one for testing so I keep forgetting to do it okay well so that's been a quick review uh, basically just the unboxing and quick test of the uh, ESR meter and uh, I'm going to be also doing uh, another follow-up video to this one where I show how to make use of the ESR meter to diagnose uh, capacitors in a uh, in circuit so uh, if you uh, if you want to find out more about how to use the ESR meter in practice uh, watch that video. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the comment uh, below. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and as always, please subscribe if you uh, think that these videos have been useful to you.